It's just, uh, if you like, I think that the central bankers, um, you know, they play along with this idea that, um, you know, gold is no longer part of the global monetary system. Um, but they like to have a bit of an insurance policy. Despite all these currency problems, why are we not seeing a single country coming forward to announce that it wants to back its currency with gold or silver? Um, the reason for that is quite uh, simple, and that is that um, part of the uh, dollar hegemony is to completely exclude gold. I mean, um, this goes as far as um, if you would have ambitions for your currency to be in the SDR, uh, you cannot back it with gold at all. It's an entirely paper thing. And this is, this is, this is written into effectively the constitution of the SDR. So I think central bankers are, um, you know, on the one hand, you know, they're sort of their public management of their currencies is to deny any monetary role for gold. While at the same time, they are quite keen to have something, if you like, in the, in in you know, in one of the sort of um, pockets, which is nobody else's liability, and that, of course, is gold. It's just, uh, if you like, I think that the central bankers, um, you know, they play along with this idea that um, you know, gold is no longer part of the global monetary system. Um, but they like to have a bit of an insurance policy just in case. Some are more, um, uh, if you like, sort of stronger on the insurance side, like, for example, the Bundesbank. There is a core of sound money men in the Bundesbank, and they have been beaten down by the ECB. But Jens Wiedemann uh, resigned um, uh, and I think left left the Bundesbank um, for unspecified reasons. But I mean, he resigned. It wasn't, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. He wasn't sacked. And this wasn't a cover up for a sack. He actually resigned. And I think, I think, I mean, uh, Wiedemann's was a sound money man. And so he was finding himself, I think, rather like a square peg in a round hole. Um, with, the, with the power of the ECB, I mean, he was effectively being told what to do, told to do things he didn't want to do, didn't think were right as a sound money man. And I think that's why he's resigned. I would just hope that when the euro falls over, and I think it's a matter of weeks, incidentally, this is not something which I think is going to take an awful long time, probably a month or two at the outside. Um, I think I, I just hope that Wiedemanns will come back and um, supervise the um, reintroduction of a sound Deutschmark. Um, because we're going to need we're going to need people like him, uh, you know, people who actually do understand that sound money is 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 virtuous, if you like, in terms of um, an economy. I mean, he understand he understands that, uh, and uh, so I think that's a sort of um, a rather long winded answer to your question. I think that we do have um, uh, sound money people, if you like who won't put their heads above the parapet in this current environment. And that is why no central bank at the moment um, accepts that gold should back their currency. And of course, the other thing is that the gold price is rising, then that, that means that you're um, increasing the purchasing power of your currency, if you tie it to gold, compared with the dollar. And that with conventional unsound uh, Keynesian theory, um, to have a rising uh, currency against um, uh, um, other currencies is go to disadvantage competitiveness in international markets. So that's, um, I suppose, the best answer I can come up with. Uh, how soon before China and Russia return to the option by China broadening the use of the digital yuan backed by gold or Russia settling resource trades in gold in return for Russia being banned from the SWIFT? So are there specific uh, signposts, if, okay, there, that happened, that's what I was talking about, that you're watching for where people will be able to say, yep, that's what Alistair warned us about in, in that regards. Well, let me deal with the digital currency story first. Um, digital currencies take some time to introduce. Um, I mean, first of all, people, central banks can't really agree what they should use them for. And the other thing is that it cuts out the commercial banking network. So in the case of America, for example, uh, you would have to um, have some legislation which would go through the Senate. 
the um, one business community that would really be cut out of all this are the commercial banks. And um, you've then got to ask, uh, well, how would they react to this? And I think the answer quite simply is that any congressman, senator who would support a bill to introduce a digital currency would find that his funding, uh, his electoral expenses and all the rest of it, which is all funded by the banking system, would be withdrawn. I just don't see it getting through the House. We're talking about a process which probably in America at the quickest, even if it was to get through, would probably take three or four years. We don't have that time. This financial war, which I'm talking about, and the effect on the Eurozone, the Euro system, undermining the central banks in the system, not, we're not, I mean, it will undermine the commercial banks as well, but I'm talking about the central banks being undermined and the euro itself losing all credibility. That is something that we can find will happen within a matter of weeks or maybe at the outside a few months. It is that that immediate. So um, when it comes to looking at waypoints, um, one is we'll see whether Russia um, starts aggressively accumulating gold. We will see whether the markets begin to realize that gold is central to all this. And we would, that indication, we would see gold go up over $2,000 and sort of, you know, and, and, and some. Stories that Russia are in the market buying gold, that sort of thing. Um, on top of that, there is a possibility that Russia might turn around and say, because um, all its paper currency from the West is is worthless. It is worthless in Russia now. In, in the central bank's uh, hands, it is completely worthless. They don't want any now. They won't want any. They'd be mad to have any. So they're going to turn around at some stage and say, well, we'll give you two options. You can either settle through Chinese yuan, or alternatively, uh, you can settle in gold. We're very happy to take the gold off you. Now, at that point, I think we we'll start to see things going horribly wrong. The other way in which this goes wrong is when we see interest rates rising because energy prices are rising and rising and rising, and we will see the effect on the eurozone. And I think that is something that you've got to monitor very, very carefully, because that, to my mind, is the weak point in the Western financial system. That is the one that fail, will fail first. That is the one to watch. Why do other countries' high interest rates not affect America? So... Again, we've seen some runaway interest rates in certain jurisdictions around the world, uh, but yet the Fed continues to uh, hold rates uh, at or near zero in the U.S. Um, can you talk to us about how this can how this can happen and uh, what you think will unfold in that arena? Well, I mean, there are obviously two aspects to this. You've got the foreign aspect and you've got uh, the domestic U.S. aspect. aspect. But if you look at the foreign aspect, then um, a country like Turkey, for example, uh, there is a fundamental distrust in paper currency in Turkey. In this, we're talking about the domestic Turkish economy. Um, uh, people would far rather have gold. So what they do is they actually hold on to gold, but they spend the lira. And um, the distrust that um, uh, the government faces about its own currency has been undermining the lira. I mean, just they consolidated one million to one. I think it was in 2002, 2003. And we're still looking at um, a lira, which is going down the pan um, measured against the dollar. Um, and you can see that uh, Erdogan's approach to um, monetary affairs is childish. I mean, it's the only way to, to, to describe it. So that's one side of it. Um, that's why interest rates in Turkey are high, why interest rates in some other current uh, countries are high. And indeed, they've just had to double them in, 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 in Russia. And it's really, I think, the sort of domestic perception about the stability of the currency, which is really the, the, the guiding factor there. When you look at the other side, um, we're looking at a dollar whereby um, interest rates are suppressed. I mean, we know we've talked about this before, the level of real interest uh, rates is um, ridiculously uh, negative. I mean, we've you know we've got um, what seven and a half percent CPI inflation, and yet um, the yield on the ten-year U.S. Treasury is one point seven percent, you know, or one point eight percent. This is you know unsustainable. 
Sooner or later, the markets are going to turn around and say this is wrong and reprice it. And I'm not saying that this will be repriced by the Fed. It will be repriced by markets. What tends to happen is you have an event which means that um, the central bank loses control. The event can either be a domestic one, like you know the mismanagement of the government's finances gets to such a pitch that uh, the currency starts being um, sold down in the foreign exchanges. And the only way in which the slide in the currency can be stopped is by raising interest rates. So there you've got an example of how the market starts taking over the pricing of things. And uh, the central bank can only respond, and they tend to respond reluctantly and belatedly. Um, so, you know, that's that I think is the problem that we have really uh, in major markets such as um, the U.S. market, uh, U.S. financial uh, um, markets, U.K. financial markets, Japanese financial markets, European financial markets. They are all rigged. And um, sooner or later, that's going to come to an end. And as I say, it's going to be an event that does it. And I think that uh, by turning um, what was a sort of under the surface financial war between the West and uh, on the one side and Russia and China on the other, and really ramping that up, the blowback from that, I think, is going to be what destabilizes us. And so the moves that we made, I can understand them from the political point of view. They're very unwise, very, very unwise.